Greetings comrades. There's two reasons why we need to balance our general ledger accounts at the end of a reporting period. The first one relates to the current period. We need to determine our balance for our assets, liabilities and owner's equity before we're ready to prepare our balance sheet. Now the revenue and expense accounts, they're going to be closed off to the P&L summary. The P&L summary will be closed off to the capital. We'll deal with that with a future vid. The second reason why we need to balance our accounts is to prepare our GL accounts for the next reporting period. So let's demonstrate with firstly this cash at bank ledger. So we've got a bunch of entries on the debit and credit side for the month of January. Given I'm doing this in Excel, I'm going to use the magic of Excel to do this, but obviously there'd be a different approach if we're manually doing this with pen and paper. Okay, so step one, we need to total up our debit and credit entries. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to use an Excel formula. So we're just gonna go equals sum SUM. I'm gonna open bracket, drag down all those debit entries and the dollar column and close bracket total. Then I can copy that formula across to my credit side. Okay, so we've got a debit balance of 21,440, slightly higher than our credit total, sorry, of 20,700. Step two, now I need to top up my smaller side, smaller side dollar wise. So. In this case, we need to top up the credit side so that we have matching totals here. 21,440, I need to top up my credit side so we get there. So the date's important, the end of the reporting period, 31st of Jan. We type in the word balance. It's our final balance for the month. And our total will be our big total, 21,440 minus our smaller total, 20,700. Okay, so now I have balanced the two sides of the ledger, 21,440, 21,440 on the two sides. I've worked out my final balance at the end of the reporting period, $740. So this is the figure that will go in our trial balance and in the current assets section of our balance sheet, because it is indeed, even though it's on the credit side, it is indeed a debit balance. So what we need to do now is step three. We need to carry this forward to the start of the next reporting period, which will be February. So we go to the opposite side of the ledger. So we go from the credit side to the debit side. Again, we type in the word balance and we just manually record that we're going to start the next period with a $740 balance in our bank account. Okay, let's demo that again, this time with an inventory account. So same drill, step one, determine your debit totals and your credit totals. So again, my formula equals sum open bracket, drag over those debit dollar cells, and then I can copy that uh, formula across, control C, control V, make sure your totals are on the same line. So again, as you'd always expect with inventory, our debit total exceeds our credit so total. So now we need to top up the credit side, so we get 9,400 on both sides. So again, our date is important. End of the reporting period, we're working monthly. So 31st of Jan, type in the word balance. And we need to work out the difference between our debit total, the bigger one, and our credit total, the smaller one. So equals 9,400 minus 6,000 gives us $3,400 balance. So again, I've balanced my debit and credit sides on the same row. I've worked out that we have a $3,400 balance. That needs to be carried forward for the start of the next reporting period to our debit side, the opposite side. So therefore, in our balance sheet, we will report a 
inventory balance of 3400 and this inventory ledger will start with this 3400 ledger entry uh, all these other ones will be gone because um, we've balanced formally balanced the ledger 